running it at 720p uh, because I want to show you guys where I am and hopefully you can see it and hopefully it can support a 720p stream because uh, it's really beautiful here. So um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys where we're at. And maybe we'll go walk, walk quickly down to the water just to check it out and then back up onto the road to catch another ride. Um, but uh, it's a gorgeous place here. So let's check it out in one sec. Make sure everything's okay on all other fronts. tried running the stream at 720p my first day for a little bit and it worked well when I was in the city it's just once I left the city it didn't um, but I'm getting really fast internet here or comparatively fast compared to what I'm used to so I want to see if you guys can uh, actually have a high resolution stream for a little bit But sometimes I just don't understand. Like, it's tough for me to tell how the stream is doing from my end. Like, right now, it says we've got good stream quality, full bitrate, full quality. But it says I have zero viewers. When when I restarted the stream, it said we had eight. So I'm guessing there's someone there. Um, but like, Streamlabs just sometimes, I don't know if it, uh, I never trust it because I know sometimes it's lying to me. So, so you know. But I hope uh, those of you that have uh, checked out the stream today have enjoyed it. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed it. Uh, I've had a great day. It's sunny. It's beautiful. Just a light breeze. Uh, had two awesome rides with two really nice guys. Um, looking to catch at least one more, maybe two. Uh, we're getting close to California now. Probably be there by tonight or tomorrow. We have at least one viewer for a little bit more, at least. <laughs> yes! One! Happy to see you back in chat. Um, yeah, so let's uh, do a quick... Uh, show you guys where I'm at. So this is the coast of Oregon. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. slash where is this? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, this is... I'm gonna have to look on my phone. The guy told me, but if you've watched this stream, you know my memory isn't that great. Let's see. Port Orford. I'm gonna update the stream title. That's where I am. Um, let me just see. Just pulling up a map. 
We're getting close to California, boys and girls. Yeah, it is beautiful. Just because I've been driving for a little bit, uh, I'm going to go for a quick walk, check out the, uh, the coastline a little bit. I think just for like 15 minutes or something like that. Um, and then I'll go back out on the road and catch another ride. See where we can get to today. But uh, I've had a great time today. We actually had a pretty good stream today. Uh, after Steve, our first ride, and we were trying to catch the second ride, the stream picked up for a bit. We had like 30 something viewers for a while. Uh, yeah. It's actually gone pretty well. Did you just finish up class for the day, Christina? Oh. Maybe I'm smiling, happy to see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the uh, connection isn't strong enough uh, for HD now that I'm down by the shore saying I've got a poor connection now yeah I got home about half hour ago work at five god you're a busy busy woman alright alright we're on the beach Went out, got drunk, now home. <laughs> Hope you're having a good time, Watkins. Connection is perfect for me. Yeah, it was just a little bit in the bush, so I said it dropped down. I, I bumped up the stream quality to 720p, so HD, uh, just for this section, because it, it was telling me I had a really good connection, like I was getting 12 plus megabits per second upload, which is enough to support a HD stream. So I figured I'd let you guys actually be able to see what this place looks like in kind of HD. It's HD but still at a low bit rate. Amazing view, I agree. This is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said before I get to live vicariously through you. <laughs> uh. It's so beautiful. Yep.
The man that makes it look like Pen. When she says Pen, she means Penticton. But yeah, I agree. I agree. I haven't been to Penticton in a little while, but uh, yeah, now that I think about it, that does kind of look like Penticton. What do you got? Any ride? Yeah, I got two rides today. Um, both of them were really good rides, really nice guys. Um, this guy could have actually taken me further, like almost all the way to California, but because I'm not in a rush, I like the uh, shorter, quicker rides. Oh, I guess I can show you what I'm doing here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so I voluntarily got out of that ride. That's the first one on the trip. Because um, he told me a really nice place, a beautiful place. So I decided to come here, show you guys uh, something beautiful. Uh, Port Orford, Oregon is where I'm at. And uh, I am going to have some water and a snack on this, uh, this here uh, log thing. And you guys are going to join me. Just for a few minutes. Just to relax for a bit. Get my water. And... A little guilty pleasure snack. You need to go to Fort Bragg, California. Uh, is that on my route? If it is on my route, then yeah, I need to go there. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know what my whole route is. Has that guy spoken chat since he left? The McDonald's uh, employee? No, he isn't coming to chat. He doesn't actually have Wi-Fi at home. He doesn't have internet. Uh, but he did, uh, after I signed off, he got Wi-Fi and, um, and followed me, uh, followed my channel. So, uh, he's followed the channel. I stopped by McDonald's on my way out of town to say bye to him. So I did talk to him briefly. Guilty pleasure. I like sour candy. Going as far as the East Coast? Probably. Gonna go south So I no longer feel like going south. I'm gonna go east, probably until I can not go any further east. And I'm gonna go north. At least that's some of the preliminary thought. I wouldn't call it a plan, it's a thought. So, that's what I'm thinking so far. Just tuned back in, gorgeous scenery. I agree. I'm, I actually voluntarily turned down a ride. Just stop here and hang out, have a snack, have some water. Um, this guy could have taken me, I think he said 20 miles north of, Cal of the Californian border. Uh, so he could have taken me another 30 minutes or something, but I wanted to stop and relax and talk to chat for a bit, look at the sights for a bit. So that's what I'm doing. Because I'm in no rush. Do you love sour candy and hot food? I know. But if you eat too many sour candies, your tongue like feels like it's like dissolving. Any idea what state on the East Coast? I'll start in the Southeast. So I'll probably start in Florida and work my way up. Um, any uh, any recommendations? I'm guessing by asking that you have a place in mind or something? Problem is these have all kind of squished together so they've become like one mound of conjoined different colors of sour 
Patch Kids. I know I say Snickers sponsor me, but I wouldn't mind a little Sour Patch sponsor too. Or a Sour Cherry Blaster sponsor. You're 50 miles outside Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's on your way, give me a show. Yeah, for sure, man. That's cool. I'll do that. I'll have to write a note, though, because I'm going to forget. You know me, my memory. But I'd love to get some, uh, meet some of the viewers. You left a bag of Sour Patch Kids on the dash during the summer last year. That was a mistake. I agree, that would be a mistake. <laughs> Frost Drakens. Thanks for following. Frost Draken. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for following the channel. Hope you're enjoying yourself. We'll be hitchhiking pretty soon. Just taking a little break. How's it going, Wisco Mike? It's going good. Actually, it's going wonderful. This is the first fully sunny day I've had on this whole trip. So I'm enjoying the sun. I'm enjoying the view. I'm enjoying my Sour Patch Kids. Uh, enjoying chat. So, uh, I'm gonna say all over. You know, this is a, like a 9.5 out of 10, almost a 10 out of 10 day so far. Actually, I don't know what would make it better. So, it could just be a straight 10. How's your day going, uh, Wisco Mike? Sorry, you asked me. I should ask you back, because I actually do care. I'm curious. Stay tuned for Hitch Live traveling across the ocean on a handmade boat tonight. No, I'm just gonna lash together some sea turtles and give her. Um, have you traveled much in the States before this trip? If so, where have you been? Uh, last fall, I hitchhiked to Boston. Um, through the north, like across Canada and then through the northeast section of um, uh, the United States. So that was through uh, upper New York, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts. So that's the extent of my hitchhiking in the US. Uh, prior to that, um, I'd only been when I was a kid uh, and we went down to California when I was a kid. You can buy me dinner. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. I'll hold you to that. When I make it to South Carolina, you're buying me dinner. You're in Madison, Wisconsin, if you make it up this way? I might. I, feel, I think Wisconsin, it was illegal to hitchhike there, but just recently they, like, they revoked that law, so now it is legal. In that case, I do want to come there. Then yeah.
have to take off Cristiano. Someone remind him, remind him to not forget his water ball. Someone remind me. I'm forgetful. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, hey, prostrate. You know, not too much up. I'm just relaxing, enjoying my day, enjoying my Sour Patch Kids, watching the waves, enjoying chat. Wait, oh, you're, you're a McDonald's guy? <laughs> you're the, the famous McDonald's guy? Awesome to see you made it in the chat. Are you off work now? Why do you hitchhike? I hitchhike because I enjoy it. Uh, I've hitchhiked, yeah, for like in my description below. Hitchhiked for four years, I've been picked up 700 times. I, I hitchhike because I like the people I meet. I like the experiences I have, I like the sense of adventure every day because you don't know what's going to happen, who's going to pick you up, where they're from, what their story is, where they're going. Um, I think it's a really interesting way of traveling uh, and that's why I do it, because I like it. I trust you heard of whales law. <laughs> you said no more beaches yesterday? Did I? Well, <laughs> I guess I lied. Beaches today. No, I'm a law abiding citizen, Snappio. It's you, Tyler. You get off work at. You're on Twitch at work? That is. This is bad. But I like it. Welcome to the channel. I'm happy you're here. Yeah, we talked about whales. Was it when we were on the beach or when did you talk about that? I feel like it is. Like between towns we definitely lost connection, like things went to crap for a little bit. But there's just nothing you can do about that when you're like between towns in a really, really rural area. Like it's a dead zone for Verizon. But when I have been in good connection zones, it's been much more reliable. Like my other jetpack right now, even though we're getting good speeds, it would be it would give me fast speeds and then it would cut out, and then it would give me fast speeds and then it would cut out. But this one's been a lot more stable when I am in a place where uh, there's okay reception. Okay, I meant to say I gotta get up work at 4 p.m. Okay. Just five more minutes, and then I'll be, start. I'll walk back up and catch another ride. So this will be a hitchhiking stream again, I promise. Still got just shy of four hours of daylight. Now the only problem with hitchhiking when it's sunny, like early in the morning or closer to sunset, is this, <clears throat> sorry, is the, the sun tends to either be directly in my eyes, so I'm like trying to like look friendly and I'm like squinting with my eyes closed and like staring at, trying to like catch a ride. Or the sun's in the driver's eyes and I'm just the silhouette which is the worst scenario because they can't see me. I'm a silhouette. One, that's dangerous because the sun's in their eyes and I'm standing on the side of the road. And two, I'm just like a dark silhouette to them. Um, can't see me. So that is the downside of hitchhiking in the morning or evening before the sun sets or right after the sun rises. Because the sun's low on the horizon so it's just like right in your eyes. Either my eyes or the driver's eyes. That's the downside. Um, so when people have asked like the ideal hitchhiking conditions, I if we're talking on an all-day basis, I think like a high overcast is actually the best hitchhiking conditions because regardless of time of day, 
everyone can see everyone. No, there's no sun in any eyes, but it's not dark and dreary like if it was pit, like really rainy or anything like that. Trevor, what else have you eaten today? I've eaten a breakfast sandwich from a, a coffee shop, like a like a local coffee shop in, uh, in in Coos Bay. I had a Snickers bar. I had a McChicken or a, what we call in Canada a Junior Chicken when I went to say uh, bye to, to Tyler, uh, the McDonald's man, and um, some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> that's how I'm. That's what I've eaten. And water. Sitting in your truck. Yeah, we had a pretty long stream in the uh, in the truck. Gave me a whole tour of the area. Found me a good place to camp. I went to a beach. Saw some big waves. It's a good time. Snickers hype? Yeah. Sponsor me, Snickers. It satisfies. Um, yeah. I eat Snickers pretty frequently when I travel. This is what happens. They're all gonna melt together. This sun feels so good. Is there a way to delete bad comments coming through in Twitch chat? Um, if we have a moderator, you're a moderator. Yeah, you, you, you can. You can. Uh, I don't know how to. I've never been a moderator. <laughs> Again, I know nothing about Twitch. I just thought this was an interesting platform to be able to uh, show people what my experience hitchhiking is like. Um, so I don't know how to be a moderator. I don't know. Like I, I gave people a few, a few people moderator status, uh, but uh, I don't, I don't know. All right, I ain't got. What do you think? Time to hitchhike. This is a hitchhiking stream after all. Stream makes you you miss living in the Pacific Northwest. It is a gorgeous area, and like yeah, where I'm from in Canada is is very similar to this. It's the west coast, southern west coast of Canada, so similar climate, and we'll have similar landscapes to this in places. Albeit this is quite beautiful. Um, so yeah, I can see why you miss it. I don't know where you live now, but. Um, how many places uh, beat this on a, a pure beauty standpoint? Like, there's definitely going to be contenders, but it's all going to be personal preference at that point.
someone removed your rights to do anything? Really? Like I, I, I don't, I, as far as I know, like, you're, you're a moderator. Um, I can't even tell like on here, but you've got your matter, moderator badge and stuff like that. Um, Cause beyond that, like, again, I just don't know anything. Um, I guess leave a message for impact in the discord or something like that in the uh, moderator channel. Basically, not a moderator. I don't, I'll, I'll leave a message uh, uh, to uh, impact on the uh, on the Discord, and, and I'll see what's up with that. Um, because yeah, I, I I'll, ideally, because I stream all kind of hours of the day. Um, we want someone with moderator uh, powers status to be in the stream. Like ideally, we'd have one, one or two at all times, but I stream anywhere from like 7 a.m. to when it gets dark or after it gets dark, depending on what I'm doing. If I'm in a ride or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I'll try and figure that out. Just uh, it's hard for me while I'm on stream right now. I don't like when I say I don't think Impact would have removed your powers. He just knows everything about Twitch as far as I'm concerned. He's he's like my my Twitch guru. He knows everything. Yeah, I, I thought of your mod, then you have uh, moderated powers as far as uh, chat moderation goes. I don't know. We uh, can troubleshoot that. Uh, I just can't right now. Okay. Gonna have a quick couple gulps of water, and then, uh, and then I'm climbing down, and we're walking back up, and gonna go catch a couple rides. Time to get on the road again. I'm back.
Yes. Don't have an answer for, uh, for you guys. Wish I did. In time, I'll know more things about Twitch and everything like that, but uh, as of right now, I uh, know next to nothing. But on a, on a real travel day, I, I stream like most of the day, so uh, I'm sure I'll learn stuff quickly. I've also got this Impact Velocity is kind of like mentoring me and telling me how to do like everything stream wise, so. He knows everything. Yeah, send him a message. Um, if not, I'll, I'll ask him later. Say goodbye to the beach. Beach stream over. Back to hitchhiking. This is Hitch Live after all. you're going south. <laughs> you thought I'd be in Cali by now? Hey, the last ride I had, he could have taken me, I think he said, 20 miles north of the Cal uh, Oregon-California border. But I wanted to have more shorter rides. Because I like the process of hitchhiking. I like, like being in and out of cars, meeting new people, checking out new places like this beach here. So, I voluntarily got out of the ride. Not because I didn't want to ride with him. He's an awesome guy. He's really cool. He's actually a screenwriter, or he's training to become one. He submitted uh, a screenwrite to the Seattle Film Festival or something like that. Really interesting guy. But I, uh, <laughs> um, I like the short rides, so. Now what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna stream in HD here. But pretty much as soon as I get picked up, I'm going to have to restart the stream back to a much lower standard definition resolution. Because uh, between towns, signal drops off for just obvious reasons. Um, so, that's the plan. This will be an HD hitchhiking stream temporarily. really feel going uphill with the extra 60 pounds on my back. Satellite is... I doubt satellite internet with the amount of data I use would be only $150 a month. I use a gig an hour. Depending on the bit rate. A stream at. Also, I'm not sure how fast the speeds are for satellite. Um, because we need a decent uh, upload to be able to stream. Because I pay 150 US a month for this Verizon data. If you, if you refer me to the 150 satellite option, I would snap that up in a, in a minute. And for those of you that haven't seen me hitchhike before, when you see me like wave to someone, they'll like wave to me, they said they were going local, 
pointing like this means they're like turning off shortly. Same with this, this means they're going a short way. Um, so that's just me acknowledging that they kind of acknowledged me. <laughs> We'll do a quick spot analysis. It ain't great, but it's, we'll check it off. So this is the spot. If that, um, if this curb wasn't here, this would be a pretty good spot. This is pretty wide. This is like a full lane of traffic wide. Decent line of sight. And um, slow traffic, because we're in a city. So it checks off like two and a half. Two and a half out of the three things I look for. Has a long line of sight. Uh, and it has slow traffic, and, but the shoulder's a little meh, but it's okay. No complaints. Acknowledging you for a short, long ride. Oh, so, like, people, some people will just wave, which is nice, and I'll wave back. Uh, it's just nice to them to be friendly. But other people will pretty much be telling me that they can't pick me up due to this reason. Uh, so this means they're like going a short distance, um, and one sec. And sometimes people will point left to right, means they're like turning off soon. Doomhauer, thanks for following. Uh, so they're pretty much saying they're local as well, which means they're, uh, they're saying it's not worth it to pick you up. Uh, kind of like, I would pick you up, but, but this, so... It wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Um, there's a lot of reasons to not pick up a hitchhiker here, but it's just nice. Even when just someone just waves at you or like like friendly, like gives you a nice little thumbs up or something like that, it's nice. Uh, the closer you get to cities, the less and less that seems to happen. I think it's like when you're in a city, like in most cities, there's like a large like kind of homeless population, people begging for change and stuff like that for money. Um, and you become accustomed to just kind of like not acknowledging them um, because like you can't help everyone out. Like, yeah, you might want to help out other humans, but like you can't help everyone out. So you learn to just not acknowledge them. And it, like people see me in kind of the same way um, except for money, I'm begging for a ride, I guess you could call it. <laughs> or asking for a ride. Um, I don't know if they're comparable. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Um, I live in the Midwest now, but I live in the Pacific Northwest for a few years and miss it. So I really enjoyed watching your stream and seeing the scenery. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. What, what, what brought you out to the Midwest? If you grew up or you're from or lived in the Pacific Northwest for for years, it'd be hard to leave that. Are <laughs> you one of those New Age freak show Bernie Sanders socialist son of bitches? Uh, I wouldn't say I am. Um, I don't have that strong political views in either direction on the political spectrum. Um, I just enjoy hitchhiking. This isn't the some kind of like hippie or socialist kind of uh, goal I'm trying to do here. I just I just enjoy this, <laughs> which might be weird to a lot of people, and I I accept that. I understand that, but um, but this is just fun to me. Um, done it for four years. Really enjoyed myself, and uh, I wanted to show anyone that's interested what the experience of hitchhiking is like. You end up in places like this. Get driven around by awesome people. Oops. So yeah. Beach. How far have you gone in nine days? I have hitchhiked from Port Angeles, northern Washington state to here where I'm close to the Californian border. Now, I can hitchhike quicker if you go down on like interstates or something like that. If I was going down I-5, I'd be in California like on day three of this stream. But I'm not doing this to get places or anywhere in particular. I am hitchhiking to travel, 
but uh, I'm in no rush, so I'm just doing this for fun. Do you believe in the free market economy or socialism ideas would allow... Yes, I believe in the free market economy. I didn't... Where to the last bit of your question. Or socialism ideologies would allow you to hitchhike. I'm essentially doing, like... What do you call it? Unplanned ride sharing. <laughs> Being like... Hey, I'm going that direction. Are you going that direction? Do you want to share the ride? It has nothing to do with politics. It has... <laughs> I know, politics is pretty toxic these days. But this really has nothing to do with politics. <laughs> nothing to do with my political views. Um, How did you cross the border? Were you on a ride? I took the ferry from Victoria, British Columbia to Port Angeles, Washington. They asked me what I'm doing. I said I'm traveling. I said how long I'd be there. Said I have travel insurance for about uh, 50 days, which I can't extend if I want to. But um, so I said, told them I'd like maybe 50 days, 50 days or so. Um, so I have to extend my travel insurance if I still want to keep going after 50 days. And I do recommend any of you that travel, you probably should get travel insurance because no one expects to get hurt. But um, if you do, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Hitchhiking is everything they want. <laughs> Hitchhiking is American culture, no other countries... Actually, a lot of other countries done it. I've done it in 25 countries. Um, it's actually a really popular thing to do in Europe. They have like hitchhiking leagues, like hitchhiking clubs in Russia. I wasn't a part of that, I don't speak Russian or anything like that. But I hitchhiked there, hitchhiking was easy. They also have hitchhiking clubs in European countries as well. Uh, it's an international thing. Oh, you're Canadian? For, first time in the US? Uh, no, I've been here a few times. Uh, I actually hitchhiked through New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts last fall. And then when I was a kid, I... Um, Parents drove us down to California once. <laughs> Notice me, Senpei? <laughs> I notice you. Especially if you deal with American healthcare, better safe than sorry, I agree. I don't want to break an ankle and pay $10,000. It's not in the budget right now. How far do I plan on going? Uh, I plan on going until either I run out of money or I no longer enjoy it. So, you know, could be another week, could be another year. Guess we'll find out. Ocean views. Well, there's no cars, might as well look at something pretty. Jarkler, thanks for following the channel. Hope you're enjoying yourself so far. Um, yeah, and, and what eventually I will get picked up here. Or statistically, most likely I will get picked up before I have to pack in for the night. Um, I'm probably going to end up refreshing the stream pretty quickly because. Um, between towns, there's no way this, uh, the internet's going to be able to support a 720p stream, so I'm probably going to refresh it, set it down to 480 or 360p at a lower bitrate, um, so the stream will go dark for, you know, 20 seconds when I, while I restart it. Yeah, we've had two rides today, both really nice guys. Um, one pretty short ride, like five, seven miles, and the other one more in the 20, 30 mile range, probably 30 miles, something like that. 
Um, both really nice guys. So had a good time today. And then, yeah, I got dropped off here, which is gorgeous. Had a little snack, a little bit of water by the beach, and uh, now we're continuing on. Mahika Apache. Thanks for following the channel. Zuarkadin. Zuarkadin. Thanks for following the channel. Hope you're enjoying yourself. This is such a great, like, I'm, I'm just very happy today because it's the first day where it hasn't rained. Um, so, like, I'm just so happy I'm, I'm in the sun. There's a nice, cool breeze keeping me cool. It's pretty much like the perfect temperature for being outside. It's, yeah, I'm extremely happy. And thank you all for hanging out with me and chatting with me. It's been good. Being good. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Traffic's a little slow right now. There's not too many cars coming, but that's that's just the way she is. I don't get to control traffic. Yeah, again, I've already done the spot analysis, but I'll just show you again. I look for three things. Long line of sight. Like there's a corner up there, but I've got probably 200 meters line of sight. So that's the first thing I'm looking for. Second thing is a wide shoulder. Um, so this is about a lane of traffic width, hard shoulder. If that, this thing right here wasn't there, I'd say this is like ideal, but that's there, which means they can't really pull over fully. Um, so it's pretty good. And then the third thing I look for is slow traffic and we're right in the town. so. Um, it's it's slow traffic, so um, yeah, like I said before, it, it knocks off 2.5 out of 3 of the things I look for in a hitchhiking spot. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. It shouldn't be too long. Not too many cars should have to drive by before I find someone uh, willing to pull over for me. Uh, yeah, because I subscribe to the what's. Is it also the first rule of real estate, the location, location, location uh, rule of hitchhiking? Other people will, they're like, what's the point of standing there? You might as well walk. And you can do that. And you might walk, uh, I don't know, five miles in an hour or something like that. The thing is, especially on highways like this, once we go over that bend there, the shoulder's gonna narrow up, the road's gonna be bendy, so you're, and it's gonna go up to highway speed. So you're gonna lose that line of sight you're gonna lose that wide shoulder where they can safely pull over on. And you're gonna lose the slow traffic because you're going up to highway speeds. Um, so yes, you're gonna walk five miles, but you make that up in a couple minutes driving at highway speed. So I subscribe to the find a good spot and wait there until you get a ride method of hitchhiking. But it's personal preference. That's just my preference. the weirdest encounter you've had. Depends what kind of weird. There's different kinds of weird. Uh, well, hitchhiking, yeah. Um, can you give me, can you narrow it down? Like, cause there's different kinds of weird. And you meet weird people. Everyone that's been weird has been still friendly enough. Uh, at least with the cars that I've gotten into. Um, but yeah, there's different kinds of weird. Scary. Um. Hmm. What the scariest? Like my scariest moments with hitchhiking have been based upon driving itself, not necessarily the drivers. I'll be at. Like I'll give you one example. Um, just because I was terrified for my life. Uh, I was in Poland hitchhiking north towards Lithuania on my way towards Russia. And like we were on a single track each way highway. So it's like one lane of traffic, other lane of traffic going the opposite direction. And it had a decently wide hard shoulder like where I'm hitchhiking on, maybe about this wide. And 
These guys picked me up. They're both Polish middle-aged and they can't speak English and I can't, can't speak... They can't speak English, I can't speak Polish. Um, so we can't really communicate, but they're going in the right direction, so that's cool. But as soon as we get on this highway, like they want to go pretty fast, which is fine, I don't mind speeding. But um, whenever they want to pass someone, they just drove right into the oncoming lane and expected people to go onto the hard shoulder around them. Uh, just while they're passing cars, like they wouldn't like wait for a space, they'd just go. Um, and I'm like, shit, I'm gonna die. Um, but I didn't die. <laughs> but honestly, I think that's the scared, most scared I've been. So we gotta ride. All right, we'll see if they're okay with. Uh, oh, he's got California plates too. We'll see if he's okay with the camera. Some people are, some people aren't. Um, but yeah, let's see. Hey, how's it going? Good man. Away. Where about you headed to? Uh, I'm heading on way to Crescent City. Kent. Oh, California. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now I'm recording the process of hitchhiking, uh, just to show people what the experience is like. Is that something you'd be comfortable with in your vehicle? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Cool. Bag in the back seat? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, it's a bit of a mess. It's all good. I'm a hitchhiker. I can't complain about mess. Yeah, I'm going to be on Crescent City, but I'll be there for the night, I think, because I've got a package showing up in the mail uh, for me there tomorrow. Oh, in Crescent City? In Crescent City, yeah, I, as a general delivery, just as I'm traveling, I have to go play some stuff. Appreciate you grabbing me, though. Yeah, yeah. No What's worries. your name? I'm Brad. Brad? Yep. Trevor, nice Trevor, to meet you. Yeah, you too. Where are you from? Canada. Oh, cool. Yeah. BC side, or? BC, yeah, Vancouver Island. Yeah. That's home. Um, oh, man. Now, this is a, a live stream, so there's people uh, huh? Really? So there's people watching and stuff like that. Okay, I'm just okay. gonna restart the stream because we're gonna lose connection at a high res yeah. stream. I'm resetting the stream. Like people will offer to split gas, or they'll post on like oh, yeah, Craigslist or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they'll split uh, gas and they'll be somewhere. like, "Hey, I'm driving on this day at this time from this place to this place. Yeah. Uh, like 20 bucks split gas kind of thing if they're okay. going long distance." Um, and I did that once from Vancouver to Kelowna because hitchhiking out of Vancouver, British Columbia is is a, a difficult city. Um, Hitchhike yeah, because really? it's a large city. Oh, I know. I've and been then there. It kind of connects into more and more suburbs of Vancouver. Yeah. Oh, and totally. you can't hitchhike on the highway. You have to hitchhike on on ramps. Right. Yeah. Um, so at that point, I hadn't really tried. I like it. I'm from Vancouver, and I can always find a ride been on there. the ferry. Yeah. Uh, ferry to Vancouver, you can find rides yeah, every single time, just, like all the way the, to the Okanagan, yeah. to Central BC. It's easy. Um, but once you're actually in Vancouver, it gets a bit tougher. Uh, I, I found a decent-ish spot now, so I wouldn't ride share out again, but um, uh, I always prefer to get a ride right through Vancouver. Uh, I like Vancouver, but yeah. I'm trying to hitchhike. Uh, yeah. It's not the best city for it. Um, but if traffic's slim, then Yeah, get traffic by. on here is never too yeah. great. Maybe on the weekends or something. Yeah. Uh, lots of good places to stop off and camp. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing street. <laughs> So, uh, do you get more rides in Canada than you do in the U.S.? I've had no problem getting rides in place. the U.S. Like, I think my longest wait on this trip has been just over an hour. Um, okay. And, like, it was pouring out rain. I'm, I'm still, like, not sure whether rain really helps. I think it hinders a little bit. Because on one hand, like, maybe people want to help you out because, um, like, you look miserable and wet out there. But on the other hand, you're a stranger who's soaking wet on the side of the road. Maybe you don't want that in your car. Yeah. <laughs> So I think it leans more on the side of, I don't want to pick up the soaking wet human being that I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I feel like rain was kind of holding me back there. Um, but... Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, like, it, rides have come quick, people have been friendly. Um, like, like hitchhiking, I think the uh, USA kind of has a bad reputation too that, like, whatever, it doesn't really deserve it. Um, for the most part. I mean, would you say probably 99, uh, 99 out of the 100 rides you get are all good, you know? Yeah. If you've got 100 rides, there'd probably be one or two that you're like, felt uncomfortable or sketchy yeah. in, you know? And after you get a new, for the most part, yeah. 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 I, yeah. 
yeah, in my life, most rain. Um, usually people on vacation don't pick you up. People that are like, really? Uh, yeah, like, if, like oh, okay. especially if they have kids. But um, yeah, the kid did. I guess yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, that I, makes sense. I um, picked you up if I. Well, it had been approved by my wife because I went to pick up somebody uh, probably about a week ago. I was with my wife. No, it was in Alaska. No, I think we're down here. But anyways, we just came back from last. I saw someone. I was like, "Oh, we should give them a ride." She's, she's like, "No, we're not giving my ride." <laughs> she's the final say. Well, that, my that daughter's guy. in the back seat. Yeah. She's like, oh, "Okay, yeah, yeah. she was." How old's your daughter? Uh, she's eight. Eight. She's like, okay. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, she's just like, uh, "No, we're not giving." Them a ride. <laughs> and they, they look fine. They, they look like they're yeah. being safe or whatever. Yeah. It was, like, it was raining that day too. Mm -hmm. I felt sorry for. Her. Yeah, so I, like I said, probably 99% of the time my family's in here, I do not give people rides. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense, yeah. and I'd probably do the same thing. Yeah. Even though I've hitchhiked so much, like, when I do drive, I pick up almost everyone because uh, I've been in that position a lot, uh, and I want to return the favor. Uh, now, I, the worst person I've picked up was a homeless schizophrenic guy. Who, okay, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that was a bad fun, judgment yeah. on me. I couldn't, like, I was like, it was quick, you know, yeah. and I, it, was, it wasn't this time, it was in Alaska yeah. when I, I was working up there in the 90s, and, uh, and uh, um, I was like, and he wanted to ride all the way down, it was like, it was going to be like three hours in the car with this guy, <laughs> and, but he freaked so bad, like, yeah. Um, uh, he, yeah, it was bad, and so, I ne so when, I didn't tell him how far I was going, so he just said he needed got in the car it's like hey I need to ride down to Sadatna and I was like oh okay um, I can we can give you a ride and then once we get in the car you know because I I could tell once he opened the door I was like oh god yeah. I should stop for this guy probably shouldn't have but uh, so we rode about 50 miles together and that was that was bad I mean he he didn't say like two things to me the whole time just sat or, there yeah, yeah. Just sat there but, always me but did the you... person put their stuff in the back that's like If I'm in my truck, I tell them to put it in the very back. And, yeah. Uh, it, it's got a key, it's got a cover, cover over it, so their stuff's mm -hmm. not going to get wet. But if, yeah, that's that's kind of. You don't of, want them to have access to all the. Yeah, you know, I mean, just to, most people are pretty cool about that. Like you mm -hmm. said, oh, I'll just throw my stuff back here. Yeah. Whatever, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's some rules to hitchhiking. Now, now you said yeah. that that ride was supposed to be like three hours, but then you said 50 miles? So I only took him 50 miles. What, I was yeah, like, well, oh, I'm going to like a, yeah. no, you know, I dropped him off. And okay. I was like, I decided, I just went and got some coffee. I drove up, the, I was in Girdwood, so it was, that's about 45 miles from Anchorage. And yeah. so I just stopped and dropped him off 45 miles. Like, <laughs> and then I went and got some coffee at this place, and then yeah. he was still standing out there, and I turned and I felt bad, but I was like, right. there's no you had way enough. I could do the rest of this trip with you, dude. There's just no way. Yeah. What's the uh, longest ride you got when you're hitchhiking? Yeah. Uh, so well, the first time I went to Alaska, I hitchhiked from Girdwood down to Sadatna, which was about two and a half hour, three hour ride. Yeah. And uh, got dropped off. I rode uh, when I uh, was at a food. Sh I was eating a sandwich and start talking to these people because <laughs> they were talking about going to Sadatna, and I was like. Oh, I was like, uh, would you mind give me or I just went up to him. I overheard him talking. And they were in an RV, a very nice RV. Yeah. And they gave me a ride. They were pretty cool. But it was an older couple, just man and wife. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty clean cut. I mean, I, yeah. 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 I didn't look like it. And, uh, yeah. Been on, and been on the street for a couple of months. Yeah. Like, I, I purposely present myself in a certain way when I'm traveling. And I try to stay clean cut. Now I'm getting kind of stubbly, but like, I try to be like shaven, yeah. look clean, even though I'm not Hair's that combed. clean. Yeah, yeah. like your, you know, your clothes are, you know, clean or they're yeah. not all rags and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. So it is all about how you present yourself, which you know sounds kind of shallow, but like yeah, someone's got max five seconds to see you to make that snap decision. Yeah. Whether that's someone I want to sit, sit next to in my car or not, this yeah. complete stranger. Yeah. Um, so make a good five second impression. <laughs> now my wife wouldn't have picked you up. She doesn't pick up anybody. No. Yeah. 
And so, I, 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 what, so my, yeah, that was going to be my next question. So I bet, what, 90% of your rides are probably from other males. Yeah, so, I yeah. think I tell people, like, yeah. it's about 15% of my rides are, are women. So, yeah, yeah you're right, uh, around the 10% mark. Yeah. Um, but, like, just what, two days ago, I got picked up by two girls just on a two-day little vacation from where they live near Portland. Yep. And um, they drove me from Yakats to Florence, we hung out, had dinner, skipped some rocks, hung out, then they offered me a place to stay at their Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed in there. It was just getting better. <laughs> so I stayed at their Airbnb. Um, so like, you just never know. Uh, you get this, you get all different kinds of oh, people there checking. Yeah. But yeah, statistically, the most common is, yeah, just a, one guy driving by himself. And, you know, yeah. if you used to hitchhike or, um, yeah, usually it's like they hitchhiked at some point in their life or they used to hitchhike at these yeah, I would turn in a favor, kind of have that experience. Yeah, they know what totally. it's like to be oh, there. Oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah totally. I mean, yeah, my wife has never hitchhiked, so yeah, she doesn't know what it's like to um, you know, be without <laughs> to be out there, yeah. being, trying to catch a ride somewhere. But know. the thing is, like, if you're gonna do it like recreationally for fun, like you have to be a patient person. You like, you can't be mad when people don't pull. Like, even if they're going the right direction, oh, yeah. even if they have room in their car. I've had people flip me off. Oh, me too. Yeah, <laughs> me oh. too. And it, it just doesn't really. I I don't understand it, but it doesn't bother me. I'm just like. Like, I probably didn't want to ride with you anyway, yeah. <laughs> based off of that. So Exactly. So this is Gold Beach. Gold Beach. Yep. That's the Rogue River. What a beautiful area. Oh man, this place is this place rocks. It's a nice area. Yeah, I'm a little bummed to be leaving actually. <laughs> trying to get I mean I'm excited to go to Alaska. Yeah, Alaska seems like yeah, it'd be oh, pretty cool. Oh man, it's super in the U.S. I've had, uh, I got detained in Japan hitchhiking. Yeah, uh, like detained <laughs> in Japan? For, for the better part of a day. Yeah. I, I never got a ticket or anything like that. I just, due to the language barrier and miscommunication, I got dropped off in the spot where it was illegal and I knew that as soon as I got dropped off, I'm like, oh crap. Um, yeah. And it was like right next to the highway patrol office at like a, a, a toll exchange on their like, their fancy toll highway, which is a really nice highway. Yeah. Um, is that the one that has like, the a buddy of mine was telling me like some of the highways over there, they have like at the, the, the they have the road so you're, it makes like, uh, you know, they got little indentations in the road that you drive over and it's supposed to be like a harmony of the, like a song or something like that. Do you, did I don't you, think uh, I went over, but I, I believe it. Like yeah. uh, that he sounds, sounds crazy. That sounds, yeah. sounds like <laughs> something they do in Japan. Yeah. He says, he's like, man, I'm never, he, 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 uh, he was telling me about it. <laughs> I've heard that, yeah. And you ski quite a bit here. Uh, yeah. When you get the opportunity. Yeah, when I get a chance. Um, yeah. Best skiing here is over in um, Mount Bachelor, over to uh, you know smaller places, Mount okay. Ashland yeah. and Mount Shasta, and then backcountry around Crater Lake area. So. You ski too? Backcountry. Backcountry yeah. ski too, yeah. Like yeah. throw some skins on. Yeah. Oh then, yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome. Do you do that? Uh, I was. I mean, you're I, in, like, the perfect place. I know. <laughs> I uh, spent a year working for an outdoor store in Calgary, and almost yeah. everyone that worked there was ski tours. Yeah. And then, like, a, a year later, like, the, I was going to stay working there for a bit, but then the store shut down. Yeah. Um, but, like, there was so much, not pressure, but, like, opportunity to, like, oh, get I into know. that yeah. because yeah. of the, like, yeah. you already had this group of people that you could just go out with at any time. Yeah. I just never, like, I would have had to invest, like, two grand in gear, and then... That's expensive. Uh, yeah. Even with yeah. discount, like... Yeah. worked in the industry um, and I had to get my AST uh, Avalanche sta safety training one yeah. uh, as well because no one will go out with you or at least yeah, yeah, it's uh, right. without that and I don't want to go out without yeah, it's like right. you want to ski with people that if you get in trouble if, yeah if you got yeah. trouble you want to know those people are capable of Rescuing helping you out yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what so um, but yeah it sounds like it'd be amazing yeah. I, I grew up skiing um, yeah. that's I live like 30 minutes. I was on Vancouver Island. We've got like one major hill and one small local hill, uh, and I was like 30 minutes from the the major hill. Um, so a lot of people grew up skiing there. <laughs> well, we went uh, 
we took a tour over there. We went kayaking uh, uh, for Alaska, not this last couple of years, but I used to go uh, kayaking in BC, like whitewater kayaking, so yep. down a lot of the rivers and stuff. But we, my wife and I took a short trip, and daughter took a short trip with the ferry over to Vancouver Island. And oh, yeah. is it Tofino the Beach? Yeah, yeah, on the on the west coast yeah, there, people go surfing and everything. Yeah. Gorgeous area. You go through like Cathedral Grove, which has yeah. some really beautiful forests and stuff like that. So, we spent a couple days down there. It was nice. So, we'll probably do that again on the way back up, I guess. Yeah, that's my home. You can uh, ski and surf on the same day, I guess. You can kind of do that around here, too. You could do, yeah. you could get away with that here. Yeah. You just have to be on your game. You'd have to yeah. drive a, You'd have to drive a little bit. But, I mean, these mountains will. Like a month ago, it was snowing on this road, which it doesn't happen very often because it's yeah. pretty much at sea level. But it, the, there was places that accumulated a couple inches. It was pretty treacherous driving, actually, yeah. on this road. Uh, and, um, but uh, but yeah, for the most part, it doesn't really stick. Or any snow around. Snow. We got a lot of rain. rain. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. temperate yeah. rainforest, all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, not much snow. Barely get like barely gets below zero ever. Yeah, same here. Mostly in the winter time, it's like 40 degrees. I would say would be yeah. probably the average low temperature. Yeah. Yeah. High temperature in a day is like 51. I mean, no more than about 10 degree cha uh, yeah. change. But um, yeah, that's about the same here. It's been the uh, the other thing I'm uh, trying to adapt to is uh, Canadian weed our temperature in Celsius oh, and our, yeah, our speed in kilometers. Yeah. Um, right. So I'm trying to convert. And when I'm telling people about distances, I automatically default to kilometers. I'm like, you know, I, 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 I think know, in miles, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. So it, it's been both ways. I'm like, 51 degrees, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of get an idea. But yeah, it's a learning process. I, I mean, I use it in healthcare every day. We don't. All, all healthcare is in, in metric. Yeah. 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 Well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> some of these little hospitals are, yeah. are yet to convert over oh, okay. the metric system. But yeah, Canada's going to exactly. um, Just saying five foot something, just, I don't know. Yeah. It, it seems to mean more, more in my mind than uh, I think so. saying 180 something. Six meters. Yeah. Yeah. Trip, oh, was it? Uh, across oh, okay. Canada, oh. St. John's, Newfoundland, flew yep. to Dublin, hitchhiked around Europe for four months, crossed from Latvia into Russia, hitchhiked across Russia. To Russia. <laughs>